Uh, all right. So these are the, the questions you had in your homework. We're going to go through them together. Okay. I know that you did not know quote, how to do this problem, but you could have definitely tried. You could have made some progress, and that's what I'm going to look for in the homework. To help you first, uh, I, I stated something about the area and the perimeter. Okay, so let's start with this. Write an equation for finding the area of this rectangle. And we'll just, we'll just start right there. I, I give the, the class that maybe two minutes of one. Oh, do we find the area of a rectangle? Okay. Length, length times width. Okay. Why is it length times width? Here, let's use a specific example. It'll be easier to explain that way. So let's say we have a rectangle that is three by seven. Now, can you use this to explain why? Well, okay, so how would you use your little formula you just said to find the area of this rectangle? Um, three times seven. Three times seven? Okay, now why is it three times seven? Because that's the length of the width, like the width is three, you know? All right, let me get you started down this explanation. Area is, it's measuring a number of something, a number of what? Okay, area is the number of what things? How do we measure area? We measure them with, we measure area with what things? Numbers. Numbers. Oh, squares. With squares. Yeah, there you go. What's the area of this? Of this rectangle? 21. Because there are 21, Kelly only? Squares. Squares. How do you know there are 21 squares? Because. Okay, I've put you through enough. Yeah. Uh, James? Is there three squares going up and seven and going into the right? My picture not very much to scale. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven squares can fit this way. And there's room enough for three rows of seven. So three groups of seven, right? 21 squares. Okay, so we go back here. It's length times width because length times width quickly calculates how many squares can fit. So in this rectangle, how would we find the area? 3x. 3x. 3 times x. 3 times x. x squares can fit here. We don't know what x is, but, you know, whatever. x squares. And there's room enough for three rows of those x squares, so 3 times x squares can fit inside of that. Okay. Now we're going to do another task. Write an oh. equation very similarly for the perimeter. How would you find the perimeter? Quick reminder, if I were to walk all the way around this <coughs> length, this length, around here, around there, I added all that up, that would be the perimeter. How far is it all the way around? So does somebody have got an equation for us? Six. All right. Three. Three plus uh, x. Three plus x. So we're walking around. Three plus x plus three plus three plus x plus x. Three plus x plus three plus x. Is that going to add up the perimeter once we know what x is? Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, can we simplify this a little bit? Yeah. Um, x times 3 plus 3 times 2. Just kind of rewrote it a little bit. x times 2 is the same as 2 times x, right? Yeah. And then 2 times 3 is 6. Myla? Well, I did 9x. Like, if you do 3 times 3 and then whatever x is. So you take 3 and multiply by 3. Yeah. Why is that? I'm going to ask you, why would you multiply it? Uh, I just thought that's what you did. You don't need to worry about, like, this is what I do. If you don't know what you're supposed to do, you gotta, you got to step back and say, like, what am I trying to figure out here? What am I trying to find? And we're trying to find the perimeter. And the perimeter is the distance all the way around. The distance all the way around is this distance plus this distance plus this distance plus this distance. For example, this guy here. The perimeter here would be 3 and then 7, that's 10, plus 3, that's 13, plus 7. That brings us all the way around to where we started, so that would be 20. Right? Right, Cody? Any questions about that? About the perimeter of this being 20? 
Pretty good? Yeah, perfect. Did it? Yeah. Okay. So we go all the way around, this would be 20. Well, we would do the same thing for this one, except we don't know how long this side is. We would do 3 plus x plus 3 plus x. So 3 plus 3 plus x plus x. Or I know that I'm going to have an x and another x, so I just say 2x and a 3 and another 3 and just say 6. And either way I look at it, any way I look at it, I have 2x's plus 6 ones. 2x plus 6. Add it all up. Now, what I told you when I gave this to you for homework is that the, the number that you give the area, the number that you give for the perimeter are the same as each other. They're equal to each other. Okay. So we're going to use that to figure out what x is. Because it might seem like, Mr. Stewart, you have to tell me how, like, what the area is in order for me to figure out what, the, what x is. Right? Or you have to tell me what the perimeter is for me to figure out what x is. If you told me one of those things, I would be able to figure out what x is, right? Agree? Yeah. You guys are off today. I don't know what's going on. We're much more on yesterday, for sure. You have a hard day today? It's a slow day. Yeah. Oh, man. Slow. 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 You are here. Two to the area and the perimeter are the same. All right. And the area, what's that? You're saying something? They each have to be nine, though. Area and perimeter. You're doing a little guessing and checking. Why would you think the area and perimeter would have to be nine? Taking two x plus six, and you're doing what? I'm dividing by two. Dividing by two. Or it's like I gave you the number eight, and you just oh. said, "Oh, I'll take your number eight, divide it by two. See what I'm saying? That's not an equation. There's no other side to divide by two. But there will be soon. There will be another side. Let's look at area, though. The area there. Area is equal to. Okay, here. Area is equal to. No. Two different things right now. What's it equal to? Perimeter. What else is area equal to? 3x. So area is the same as 3x. So can I replace area with 3x? Yeah. Because they're the same. Perimeter is the same as. Uh, 2x plus 6. Uh, it's got the equation 2x plus 6, right? It equals 2x plus 6. Now we have an equation. We have an equation with only x's in it, right? one variable. When you have one variable in an equation, you can most likely solve for that variable. Uh, and definitely in this case, we can solve for this variable. But what's different about this equation when we compare it to all other equations we've been working with so far, Jasper? Um, the, one, uh, the, the thing that it equals has a variable. OK, so you got a variable on one side, and on the other side of the, the equation you have another variable. you got the variable on both sides. OK, that's the trick here. That's what 1.3 is, is about variables on both sides. Just a new twist. So what do we do about it? What do we do about the variables being on both sides? We like variables on only one side of the equation, right? Um, they come with each other. They come with each other. Multiply, right? Go. What we do to equations, we do something to one side, we do something to the yeah. other, and hopefully what we do helps us out. Oh, it's uh, minus six, right? Minus six? Yeah. Go. Okay, then I'll subtract six from this side. Can I do to no. subtract six from three x? No. Oh, yeah. right, let's all calm down. 3x minus 6, that's what we have on that side, and equals 2x. How do you get? So 6 minus 6 is 0, so there's nothing here. 
3x minus 6, is, well, we can't combine these together, so we just have on the left side 3x minus 6. What do you think? Does that look, uh, looks kind of the same? Amen. Still have variables on both sides. We have a plus 6. So we have a minus 6 on the left side instead of a plus 6 on the right minus side. 2. Divide by 3. Right? We subtract 2x, right? Minus 2x. Minus 2x. You divide 2x. Divide two x. Hey, okay, let's stop the other things out. What's two x minus two x? Zero. Zero. Zero x or zero. So what's on this side now? X plus six. Wait a minute. Zero x. Is that x? What's zero x? Zero. Zero. Zero, zero times anything is zero. Zero. Maybe we should write it out. Zero x plus six. What's three x minus two x? Can we put those together? One x. One x. But what's zero times x? Zero x. So we don't even have to worry about it, right? It's x zero. equals nothing plus six, which is just six. Now what do we do? Uh, x is six. Yeah. What do we divide? Oh, never mind. I don't know. It's, our, it's just kind of our lucky coincidence that there's nothing to divide right now. Just x is six. Uh, so x is six, so we know this is six. And so if I, find, if I ask you to find the area of this rectangle, could you tell me what it was? This is my favorite. Area. Yeah. Yeah. What's the area of this rectangle? 18. What's the perimeter of this rectangle? 18. 18. 18, because the area and perimeter are the same. So you could just automatically know that the perimeter is also 18. But you could also add it up. 3 plus 6 is 9 plus 3 and another 6. That's 9 plus 9. That's 18. <laughs> so, the main thing we're trying to learn here is variables on both sides. How do we handle that strategy? Right? What's, what's our approach for solving a variable, or an equation of variables on both sides? Break it down. Break it down. How so? Break it down. How you did area and the perimeter together, uh -huh. and then you cut 3x and then equals 2x plus 6, so you're breaking it down into negative 3 minus on both sides, and then you can't break it down until you find that. So we subtracted 2x on both sides. How do we know that in this new equation that it's been broken down? Well, what about this tells me like I did something good? Uh, there's, not variables variables on both sides. there's not variables on both sides. There's zero x on one of the sides. Right? Zero times x. Are you shaking your head? Are you shaking your head at me? No. Somebody else? No. Matt? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Let's take this rectangle. We're gonna, learn, we're gonna reinforce some stuff about rectangles and we're gonna learn something more about these equations and variables on both sides. So again, I want you to take this rectangle and write an equation for the area. We hope you guys credit this time. All right, so what's the formula for our area? Four. 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 Um, four x. Four x. And Hunter, do you have the perimeter as well? Um, x2 plus x. X2? What's x2 mean? That means two x's. <laughs> <laughs> two x's. Or two times x. Two times x. There you go. I'm very, very good. Plus six. Yeah. Is, or no. Plus six. Eight. God dang it. Eight. Oh, here. Eight. Eight. Okay, do we have confirmation on that from the rest of the class? Yes, we yeah. do. Just going to transfer these over. Oh, by the way, there's a, oh no, this was period four. Oh. Yeah. Transfer those three over here. Okay. Um, all right, so the area based on type, four x. The perimeter, two x's plus two fours is two x plus eight. I will entertain questions about this problem, not about extra credit and extra credit. Hunter? Okay, then we do um, 4x equals x, yeah, 4x equals x2 plus 8, then you minus x2, and then minus x2 from the other side, which gives you uh, 2x equals 8, and then you divide 2 by both sides, which equals 4 equals x. X is 4. Good job. I got that Thank answer. You. You already got that answer? Yeah. That's good. That's great. Okay? So, 
variables on both sides. We cancel out the variables on one of the sides. It could be either side that we want. One side might be more uh, advantageous, more convenient for us. Uh, but cancel them out on one side, and, and then you only have them on one side and not on the other side. Okay. Um, I'm confused how you've got 2x equals 8 and the x equals 4. OK, so we got 4x equals 2x plus 8. Yeah. Subtract 2x from both sides. Right. 2x minus 2x is 0. So that just leaves 8. 4x minus 2x is 2x. But how did you get 2x equals 8 and the x equals 4? Oh, oh, only 2x. Oh, because I got the same thing. I did this uh, put it 4 plus or 4 plus 4 because that's 4 plus 7 x plus 4 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 Remember that the, the an important part of this is that 4x, the area, equals 2x plus 8, the perimeter. The area equals the perimeter. Okay. So now we've done a few problems where we create those equations. Let me just give you some equations, some variables on both sides. See if you can solve, solve them for x. So uh, let's say 5x plus 2 equals 3x minus uh, 13. Okay. Let's solve for x. Jaden, you have a solution? I think so. Okay, let's go. Okay, so you would um, add 5x plus 3x. You would add 5x and 3x. <coughs> this, is a, this is an important thing that the people all the way through calculus still don't pay attention to. Pay close attention. <coughs> Solve the equations, not by looking at the thing and putting things together randomly. Okay? We solve them by looking at the equation and always doing the same thing to both sides. Both sides. Both sides. Okay. Both sides. Not just throwing stuff from one side onto the other side and then adding them together. Let's do the something to one side and the same thing to the other side. Okay. okay. What do we do to both sides? What do you think, Jada? What's something we can do to both sides? You name it. Name anything you could do to both sides. Alright. Uh, that's it. Subtract. You do anything you want. What would you subtract? Um, 5x and 3x. Like, what are you going to do to both sides? What are you going to do to both sides? Jasper? Um, you could add, the, add 13 and get a 0 on that side. And add 13. On the other side. Okay. Add 13. Get 15. Okay, so we've got 2x plus 2 plus 13. That's 5x plus 15. On this side, we have 3x minus 13 plus 13, which this is 0, so we just have 3x here. Yeah, that looks a little bit simpler, right? At least it's just variables and not numbers over on that side. I don't want to hear what you did or what you would do, but what you could do is this right now, right? Minus 5x. Minus 5x. So there's 5x minus 5x? 0. 0x, and so we're going to subtract 5x from this side as well. This leaves us with just 15. So what's 3x minus 5x? Negative 2x. Negative 2x, very good. Negative 2x. We're getting there, we're whittling it down. Um, divide the right side by 2, the left side by 2, which gives x equals negative 7.5. What's negative 2 divided by 2? 0. Okay, let's try it. Negative 2, negative 1. Negative 2 divided by 2. Negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 1x. 
Fifteen divided by two is fifteen divided by two. Jeff? One. Um, shouldn't you divide by negative two instead of two? What you should do is, whatever makes sense, what you can do is, what's important, we can we divide by two? Yes. Is this equation true? Yes. Negative x does equal 15 over 2. But we do want to know what x is. Now, if we were to divide by negative 2, what would happen? You would get 1x plus 1x. We would get, instead of a negative 1x, we get a positive 1x. Positive 1x. Is that what we like? We like positive 1x? Yes, we do. Divide by negative 2 on the left side, we get negative 15 over 2. Your hand is raised asking if negative. 7.5 is the same, then yes, negative 7.5 is the same, but I will not evaluate. Okay, I'm not scared of fractions. Okay, Jeff? Um, what's the difference between negative 2 and negative 3? Negative 2 is negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 is negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 is negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 is negative 3 First thing we could do, Marcus? So, what I distribute between three. Distribute three. So, three x plus five. Plus what? Plus fifteen. Fifteen. Sorry. Plus three. Three oh. equals seven x minus two. Seven x minus two, five x? What? Can no. I do seven x minus two is five x? No. There's x and there's one. Oh. Yeah, and then, um, so three, and then to the left side. On the left side. 3x. You subtract 3x? Yeah. Okay. And then you get that. 2x minus 3x is so it's 15 plus 3. 15 plus 3 equals this. That's gone. 4x. 4x. Minus. And then you add the 15 plus 13, which is 18. 15 plus 3. Oh, yeah. 18. 4x. 4x minus 2. And then you add the 2. That's 20. X equals five. Good enough for five X. Yeah. X equals five. Very good. I like that was a I think I'm out of fraction. I just made that up. Now, man, there's so much different stuff going on here that the likelihood that two of you did exactly the same things and exactly like every step is exactly the same is probably pretty unlikely. Right? We may have done different things at different times. I saw some people subtract 15 and then subtract 3. That works, right? Subtract 15 and subtract 3, like they never combined 15 plus 3 to make 18. Still works. Okay. Some people did uh, minus 7x from both sides. You got negative 4x on the left side. Okay. All sorts of different approaches. But as long as we always do the same thing to both sides and we combine things correctly, we should be fine. We get the same answer. Do the same thing to both sides. Combine like terms, don't combine unlike terms. Right? And the one, like the one new twist that's, that's really any different from anything we've ever done is that we have to cancel the variables on one side so that we have a side that is just numbers and a side that is just variables. Okay? Questions? No. All right, basic idea. <laughs> Let's work on the homework for a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Okay.